was the initial need for air mobility to convey Nigerian troops for peacekeeping operations within and beyond the African continent. The Nigerian Air Force was established by an act of independent indigenous parliament in April 1964 to serve four main purposes, namely to achieve a full complement of the military defense system of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, both in the air and on the ground, to ensure a fast versatile mobility of the armed forces, to provide close air support for the ground-based and seaborne forces in all phases of operations, and to ensure the territorial integrity of a united Nigeria, to give the country the deserved prestige that is invaluable in international matters. However, the process of building the basic structures and manpower that formed the foundation of what is now the Nigerian Air Force began in 1962 when an initial batch of personnel were selected for training in Ethiopia, Canada, India, and Germany, among other countries. From this seed of officers and men, the Nigerian Air Force has grown over the past 56 years to become what it is today, a service that has effectively and efficiently conducted air operations in support of multiple internal security operations across the country, as well as projected air power beyond the shores of Nigeria to Liberia, Sierra Leone, Mali, The Gambia, Senegal, Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe among others. Nearly three years after the establishment of the service, we were drawn into the Nigerian Civil War. And uh, the Air Force participated actively in supporting the effort to keep Nigeria as a single united country. Uh, in those days, from uh, the stories of uh, some of our retired officers, uh, it was a service that was not really prepared for that, for the Civil War. It was a service uh, that was just trying to uh, get fully established. And suddenly, uh, the Air Force was dragged into Nigerian Civil War. So, but looking back at where we are coming from to today, I think we have made substantial progress. Not only in terms of the size of the Air Force, we used to have something that was just probably a command, which was primarily uh, involved in training activities. Uh, but today we have six commands, specialized commands. We have the Tactical Air Command, we have the Special Operations Command, you have the Air Training Command, you have the Ground Training Command, you have the Mobility Command, and you have the Logistic Command. So even in terms of the structure of the Air Force, uh, the service has witnessed substantial expansion. In terms of capabilities, this was an Air Force that was rolling bombs from the cabin of an aircraft to drop overhead uh, the Biafrans during the Civil War. But today we have a service that can project power better than it used to in, the, uh, in its early days. We have young officers in the ground control systems, controlling unmanned aerial vehicles, and flying those unmanned aerial vehicles to uh, distances that are well beyond 200 to 250 kilometers, and dropping the same bombs. So I think in terms of even capability, we have made substantial problems. In terms of platforms, initially we were using DC-3 to fly. Today we have the F-7s, we have the Alpha Jets, uh, we had the Jaguars at one time in the history of the service. And we have helicopter gunships, one of uh, which is the MI-35M, one of the most sophisticated helicopter gunships in the world today. It's been flown by our uh, officers. In terms of training, we have expanded our training institutions. We have the, the uh, Regiment Training Center, which is training regiment personnel for force protection, which was not existing, of course, in those days. Uh, in terms uh, of other training institutions, you have the Air Force Institute of Technology, which is not only training Air Force personnel, but even civilians 
in various areas of engineering, technology, and so on. Uh, we also have a medical uh, institution, a medical school in Kaduna that is uh, currently training our nurses. So I think if we look at where we are coming from and where we are today, I think we have every reason to be proud of the achievement. We want to salute the founding fathers of the Air Force who led the foundation upon which we've been able to add value to in the last four and a half years. The Nigerian Air Force has proved that it has indeed come of age in its 56 years history to emerge as a formidable force in Africa. This has only been possible through the efforts and commitment of the 19 past foreign and indigenous chief of the air staff, as well as officers, airmen and airwomen, seven and retired, who have dedicated their lives to serving this great nation through the Nigerian Air Force. Some of these patriots have paid the supreme price in service to our fatherland. To these heroes, the Nigerian Air Force owes a huge debt of gratitude. At 56, the Nigerian Air Force, under the leadership of the 20th Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, is driven by a vision to reposition the Nigerian Air Force into a highly professional and disciplined force through capacity building initiative for effective efficient and timely employment of air power in response to Nigeria's national security imperatives. The dogged determination of the Chief of the Air Staff to achieve this vision has resulted in giant strides in the operations and activities of the service in the past four and a half years of the current Federal Government Administration. In the past four and a half years, the Nigerian Air Force has expanded its force structure by creating new branches, new field commands, as well as several units. We have four commands as of 2015. Now, presently, we have six commands. And uh, the branch is also, we have eight branches as of 2015. Presently, we have 10 branches. And these have improved the workings of the commands and the branches. We have also had units that have been Established forward operation bases and uh, quick response groups. And these have also enhanced the operational efficiency of the NAV. The two new commands are the Special Operations Command, which is located in Bochi, and the Ground Training Command, which is located in Enugu. These commands are purpose driven to enhance service delivery by the Nigerian Air Force. On coming uh, in 2015, we carefully looked at the structure of the Air Force and realized that the current the, the structure at that time was not adequate for the kind of challenges that we are facing. For instance, in the past, uh, whenever we have any internal security challenge, personnel were contributed from units. Sometimes we remove our technicians and so we realized that, look, we need to have a different command, which is the Special Operations Command, that is uh, regiment heavy, uh, that can now be mobilized anytime to go out as our contribution to dealing with that internal security challenge. With the coming of the Special Operations Command, we have created quite a number of units now, quick response groups. In Ipetu, Ijesha, we have a quick response group. In Owere, we have a quick response group. In uh, Gusau, we have a quick response group. We have uh, a detachment in Birningwari. We have quick response wing in Agatu in Binoy State. We have another quick response group in Kerang in Plateau State. Another quick response group in Taraba State. Uh, there were a lot of internal security challenges in uh, Taraba about a year or two years ago. So those guys are supporting the forces on ground. And you can see the way that these quick response units are spread all over the country. So that anywhere you want the Air Force to be part of anything, we simply task the unit close to that place. Furthermore, in order to optimally man the new structure for more effective and efficient employment of air power, the Nigerian Air Force embarked on massive recruitment 
resulting in the training of about 9,699 young Nigerians as airmen and airwomen and 916 as officers in the last four and a half years. This has significantly boosted the capacity of the service to effectively curtail insecurity in the country while also keying into the federal government's policy of job creation for young Nigerians. Since we are aware of the key drivers of the Chief of Air Staff, so we draw our plans to meet up with the requirements for enlistment and recruitment. And we have been doing that so far without much stress. The last four and a half years has seen the unprecedented acquisition of platforms by the federal government. We have been very lucky in the last four and a half years or thereabout. The federal government, particularly the Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammad Buhari have, uh, has supported the Nigerian Air Force in terms of uh, supporting our acquisition plan, uh, plans, platform acquisition plans. We also want to appreciate the National Assembly for, for appropriating the necessary resources and, and then passing the necessary laws that will enable us or that enabled us to acquire some of these platforms. Uh, we have acquired 22 right now. 22 have been inducted. You have 10 Super Meshach aircraft. When the current government came in, we had only about three trainer aircrafts. But now we have uh, more than 15 of such uh, trainer aircraft. 10 Super Meshach aircraft were acquired and inducted. We have five MI-35Ms helicopter gunships that were equally acquired. You have two Bell 412 uh, helicopters that have been acquired and now inducted. We have four Augusta 109 power helicopters that were acquired in uh, Italy, are uh, equally inducted into uh, the current uh, operations. And then the last one, of course, uh, is the uh, MI-171E helicopter, which was also equally inducted recently. So a total of 22 aircraft. In addition to that, we are expecting 16 additional platforms. Um, the Super Tucano aircraft, uh, we have 12. We are hoping to get into Nigeria very soon. We have three JF-17 multi-role fighter aircraft that is coming in. And we have an additional MI-171, which is likely to come into the service very soon. This is aside the six flyable aircraft that were handed over from other agencies of government. It is not worthy that not since the early 1980s has such a large number of aircraft been acquired for the Nigerian Air Force by a single federal government administration. In addition, the Nigerian Air Force with support from the federal government has also reactivated over 20 previously grounded aircraft. The Falcon was grounded, was not flying in 2015, the uh, ATR-42. The 931 was grounded in Yola. The uh, Beechcraft 203 had problems with landing gear on landing here in Abuja, was grounded. Uh, the MIs 35 Peace 530, 531, and so many others that were in the past grounded were uh, brought back to service. We have also um, done live extension program on three L39 aircraft that are currently flying. So, so much has equally been done, not only in terms of acquisition, but uh, in terms of reactivation. And that has equally built the capacity of our engineering personnel, uh, getting them to work on this 20 aircraft. Uh, and another very unique feature of this effort is the fact that most of these reactivation, major maintenance activities were conducted locally in Nigeria. The, C, the C-130 aircraft, for the first time since they were acquired, we had the opportunity to do the uh, periodic depot maintenance in Nigeria, in Ikeja. Uh, for the 917, that was the first one. And then the second one, with the support of uh, Pakistan Air Force, we were able to do the periodic depot maintenance here in Nigeria. That has given our technicians the opportunity to participate in uh, stripping and reassembling the aircraft. What we simply did was to remove the major components such as engines, uh, propellers and so on. Those ones were taken out for maintenance. But the actual PDM itself, the process 
the stage by stage process of how to do it, uh, we were able to really learn from our partners, uh, firstly Sabena and then secondly uh, the Pakistanis who were here with us. Apart from the L, uh, apart from the C-130s, we have also done the PDM, an upgrade of Alpha Jet in Kainji. We are working on uh, two more Alpha Jets, and very soon I believe they will also be out flying. Uh, the MI-35P, we have done a PDM on one, the 531, which has been flying and is still flying. Then, of course, the live extension uh, program on the L-39 was conducted equally locally in Nigeria, in Kano. Uh, all, all we did was to insist that uh, our technical partners come into Nigeria with all they require. The reactivation on the second MI-35P has since been completed and a test flight conducted in Port Harcourt. The aircraft is currently deployed for operations. Apart from saving the country the much needed foreign exchange, the conduct of these major maintenance activities in country has also helped to scale up the proficiency level of the Nigerian Air Force engineers and technicians. There are so many aircraft maintenance capabilities we didn't have before that made us tend to outsource most of the maintenance to foreign vendors. Most of those capacity now we have. So we're able to do a lot of maintenance activities on our own in-country, even up to depot level. Even in the areas of uh, many of our facilities that have been reactivated, our workshops are now functional. There's ongoing NDT workshops that are being rehabilitated. Equipment have been purchased, people have been trained. So we are, we've really gone a long way, and that is impacting you know, quite highly on our maintenance capability. So there are so many things we can do now that we would not have thought of before. And the Chief of the has also been very encouraging, it has been motivating the personnel through various training courses abroad, through promotions, appointments, and various uh, activity that has helped you know, personnel to be able to stand you know, and venture out to do a lot of things that they would have been afraid to do before. To ensure that these aircraft remain available to conduct Nigerian Air Force operations, the service has in place a robust logistics support and maintenance system that has sustained platforms and equipment serviceability. Nigerian Air Force in the last four and a half years was able to reform the procurement system, imbibed international best practices, and uh, through also prudent management of resources, we were able to have sufficient funds to acquire this equipment. This gave them the, the, the courage to make things available to us. So we had a lot of openings. Many sources of these spare parts now became available to us. To the extent that we could even do competitive bidding. We sent our requests for quotation to different vendors. They gave us quotations and we were able to select the one that gave us best value for money. This helped us to maximize the available resources. This logistic support system has seen a rise in aircraft serviceability of operable aircraft from about 35% in 2015 to an average of 80% as at March 2020. The Nigerian Air Force in the last four and a half years has invested greatly in research and development so as to develop capacity to surmount current and emerging security challenges. Some of the R&D breakthroughs recorded include the production of the first Nigerian Air Force Indigenous Operational Oman Area Vehicle named Segumi, which was inducted into the Nigerian Air Force inventory by President Muhammad Buhari in February 2018. Others are the receipt of patent rights for the production of unmanned ground vehicle, as well as the production of the hydraulic accumulator diaphragm for the MI-35 helicopter, and more recently, for the L-39ZA aircraft. 
The service also locally weaponized several platforms, including the MI-17 helicopter, two Bell 412 helicopters, two EC-135 helicopters, L-39ZA trainer aircraft, and three Alpha Jets aircraft whose weapon system were reconfigured to carry not just the Western Bloc rocket launchers, but also Eastern Bloc rocket launchers. FRDC has been able to do a lot. We've been able to conduct weaponization of our platforms. Some of these platforms were given uh, to us by uh, civil organizations like the EC-135 and the Bell 412. The Nigerian Air Force, through research and development, under the guidance of the Chief of Air Staff, has been able to weaponize this aircraft for operational uses. Apart from that, we have designed and produced a hexacopter, which is at its uh, final tests now, which is capable of dropping some uh, payloads. In addition, the Nigerian Air Force designed and produced a test bench for the Alpha Jet anti skid system and locally produced 30.1 mm rocket launcher and rockets, as well as heat shield protective cone for Alpha Jet rocket pods. The focus of our research and development effort is to ensure that we are able to handle certain maintenance challenges. Therefore, in uh, 2016, we established the Air Force Research and Development Center, which is located in Kaduna, and they are doing a good job. And uh, we also entered, even prior to 2015, we had uh, an MOU with uh, about 15 Nigerian universities. University of Ibadan, Convenant University, ATBU, Amadou Bello University, University of Maiduguri, so many other universities. Um, that has really helped us and I want to say that we really uh, appreciate the support from these universities. We believe that we have highly talented uh, Nigerians in our tertiary institutions and we are very, very happy to have this engagement with them and to also have them to really look at our maintenance, aircraft maintenance challenges and see how they can use their knowledge and experience with our own technical officers, we have trained quite a number of guys, uh, quite a number of officers in Cranfield University in the United Kingdom, uh, some up to PhD level, some up to master's level, and we are building that, that pool of uh, senior officers as well. So the essence, like I said, is to see how we can deal with some of these maintenance challenges. And sometimes what we, normally, uh, what we usually do, if we have any maintenance challenge on any particular aircraft, we look at the competencies of all these institutions and write to invite where we think the competencies are and suggest to them that, look, why don't we uh, form a team with our officers and you from the university? This is the challenge we are having with the Alpha Jet, or this is the challenge we are having with the MI. Can you look at it and try to come up with a homegrown solution? And I want to tell you that we have made substantial progress and we are eternally grateful to Nigerian universities. Another significant R&D feature is the fabrication of a GTC-85 auxiliary power unit test stand for the C-130 Hercules aircraft fleet. Being mindful of the primacy of the human being as an enabler and multiplier of other resources, the Nigerian Air Force has also focused on massive infrastructure development aimed at improving and sustaining the morale of personnel and their families. Of all endowments, I think the human being is the most important. And that human being, you must, if you want that human being to be effective and to put in his or her best, you must do whatever you can to provide for the welfare of that human being. An accommodation whether residential or office accommodation, is very important. A man or woman that spends a better part of the night trying to find sleep just because of how congested where, you know, the, the accommodation that they have is, 
you know, cannot be effective the following morning. And that is why if you go to Maiduguri and other operational zones, we have tried with the support of the federal government, with the interventions we are getting, with the appropriation of funds and everything, to make sure that we, as much as possible, provide a substantially decent accommodation. Because that person is out to give his or her life. And therefore, if we want him to really be effective, like I said, you must ensure that you provide within available resources the best facilities. Recently, we had to create a hangar because we realized these guys were operating out in the open. And there's no way they can be effective if they are doing maintenance out just in the open. So we had to relocate a hangar from one of our units where we realized that that hangar is not being utilized fully and it can be better utilized in the Northeast. Relocated to that place. Now we have a huge hangar that can take 12 aircraft. So these guys can go into the hangar inside a shed and do whatever maintenance work you know, is required on any of the aircraft. And I'm telling you, in the last few days, from the reports coming to me now, with the hangar there now, is is far better than walking outside. You have a shelter over your head. Yes, the Air Force are grown spontaneously to an estimate of about 10,000 taken to the Air Force in the past four and a half years. But the ability to provide this accommodation is really outstanding in the midst of doing the economy. We're able to provide accommodation for 4,000 people and above. We have been able to build over 32 structures as office structures in, in the entire Air Force. That's phenomenal. Uh, wherever you go, you'll be amazed uh, about this uh, development. Uh, in terms of the ability in air police management, we have inducted the K-9 squadron, where we have the military working dogs. These are new innovations. They have actually given the air police a better capacity. Uh, we've established schools like the Air Police Training Center in Kerang, these are also facilities that have enhanced the capacity of the air police for forensic investigation. Hitherto, we didn't have that. And that alone supports national efforts in terms of crime and crime prevention. You have people that are in the Northeast, their children uh, you know, are in secondary schools. We don't want a situation where people will go to uh, you know, go out, our airmen cannot afford uh, school fees in other private schools and the rest. So we want to make sure that our schools are comparable to private schools, substantially comparable. And if you look at the accommodation, the dining, the curriculum of training, and everything in our facilities, I think uh, uh, with every sense of modesty, we can say that they are one of the best uh, in the country. Go to Air Force Girls Comprehensive School here in Abuja. It's one of the best schools. We go to Air Force Girls Military School in Jos. Recently, we renovated the accommodation and made sure that the place is good. The whole idea is to send a message to our personnel that you have a place you can take your children to and be comfortable and continue to fight, knowing fully well that the educational needs of your children have been adequately taken care of by the Nigerian Air Force. The provision of healthcare services has been a major priority of the Chief of the Air Staff since he assumed office in 2015. Accordingly, the sector has witnessed major transformations. Worthy of mention is the establishment of three new reference hospitals in Bauchi, Potakot, and Daura, and the establishment of new cancer screening centers in Bauchi. Kaduna, Meiduguri, and Makodi. A new state-of-the-art modular theater has also been installed at the 465 Nigerian Air Force Hospital in Kano. Why a new aeromedical wing? Accident and Emergency Department, as well as Officers' Ward, have been in place at the 063 Nigerian Air Force Hospital, Abuja. The Nigerian Air Force has in place programs aimed at alleviating the sufferings of internally displaced persons, IDPs, as well as winning the hearts and minds of those affected by the activities of terrorists 
and other criminal elements. We believe that uh, for you to really be effective and to be successful, you have to find a way of engaging the local population. And one of the best ways you can engage the local population is through medical outreach. We can't go and climb uh, something and be talking to them, but we, if we provide medical services, those that are sick will come on their own. And that will form the basis for that engagement. Every day you come to us, your child is having high temperature, and you see a soldier, a nurse carrying rifle on the left, and then using a stethoscope to find out what is happening with your child. And at the end of the day, your child is well and happy and playing again. If you have any information that will support this soldier, you will come back to him. Some people in these areas have never been to the four wall of a hospital. They have never been examined by a doctor. Some of them have just simple swelling like Poma, for which they are wondering how they can get rid of it. They never had the opportunity. The Nigerian Air Force Medical Services, through the Chief of the Air Staff, have been able to grant them access to medical facilities and surgeries. Some of them were even airlifted by our platforms, our helicopters and aircrafts to places where they will receive medical attention. Of recent is the Simon Twins in Portacourt Axis that were airlifted to Yola. These Simon Twins are still in Yola. Can you imagine what will happen to these parents knowing that the Nigerian Air Force moved them, not only one, not only two, but the entire family to Yola. And they are there also receiving care. These people will forever remain grateful to the Nigerian Air Force. So if you can do that to these people, it means anything you need from them, they are ready to make sacrifices. In this regard, the Nigerian Air Force established one level two hospital at the Dallary IDP camp and another at the Bama IDP camp, both in Borno State. The service also initiated a school feeding program for 1,000 school children in the two IDP camps. This has greatly contributed to the number of pupils that have returned to school in the area. In addition, the Nigerian Air Force recently commenced distribution of dignity parks containing a complete package of sanitary items to young girls in the IDP camps. Similarly, in a bid to strengthen better civil military relations with its host communities, the Nigerian Air Force has continued to conduct medical outreaches all over the country, reaching over 370,000 people in the last four and a half years with over 2,000 general and eye surgeries conducted. In furtherance to the capacity building initiatives as encapsulated in the Chief of the Air Staff's vision, the Nigerian Air Force has over the past four and a half years conducted training courses both locally and abroad for over 26,000 personnel covering virtually all specialties in the Nigerian Air Force. The service has winged over 100 pilots while 117 other student pilots are currently undergoing training both within and outside the country, in order to sustain its air power projection capability. Apart from ECOMO, we have not really been challenged to come and really deploy air power. So most times, you know, we, we train our guys, and if it is time for Air Force Day, we do some air show and so on. But now, the real situation is on ground. And you cannot be effective if you don't have the required skills and training. And therefore, we have gone into partnership, not only within Nigeria, to train our guys. We have been training with the International Flying School in Ilori. We have trained quite a number of our pilots. In Zaria, we have trained. In our own flying school in Kaduna and Kano, we have trained in Inugu to some extent, up to a certain time, we've been able to train. But uh, apart from that, we have also gone out 
to engage other friendly countries. For instance, Egypt. Egypt flies the Alpha Jet as well. Morocco flies the Alpha Jet. We have engaged them and uh, we are very appreciative of the support they have given us. They have done some tactical training uh, for our pilots who have now who have acquired skills and a better position to really use the Alpha Jet uh, to secure Nigeria. Uh, apart from that, of course, we have partnership with Pakistan, with India, with uh, United States, Russia. In terms of training, we are training all over. Another area where the Nigerian Air Force has significantly boosted its capacity is in force protection ability. Nigerian Air Force Regiment and Special Forces have received additional training and equipment to improve the ability of the service to protect its bases and air assets. The Chief of the Air Staff has done a lot in the area of the training of Regiment personnel and uh, Special Forces. With the tremendous achievement that have been recorded in that area, now we are able to protect much more effectively our facilities, our air bases, and our other assets. This has given us the freedom to operate like we should be operating because our special forces, our force protection guys are now responsible for the protection of our assets. So other personnel are now focused on their primary responsibilities either as aircraft technicians, admin personnel and all that. So to that extent, it has given us the freedom to be able to operate with little or no hindrance because we have a crop of well-trained special forces and force protection personnel whose primary responsibility is to ensure that our airfields and assets are safe for the conduct of air operations. Since 2015, Nigerian Air Force has tripled the number of special forces personnel to a 1,200 strong, well-trained, well-kitted, and well-motivated force capable of conducting specialized operations either independently or in concert with other services, thereby successfully bridging the gap between air power projection and force protection. We now have our own special forces also taking part in ground operations, which was not the case some years ago. You recall the chief of the air staff has established a lot of quick response groups, quick response wings, where regiment personnel are deployed and they carry out ground operations side by side the surface forces. So for me, that is a major, major achievement that the Air Force has recorded in the past four years. The overall strength of the Nigerian Air Force Regiment has also been increased from less than 1,000 to about 4,500, with over 3,200 of these trained in force protection in complex air ground environment by the British Military Advisory Training Team, BMAT. So explain it. So, if you look behind us there, you will see sandbags and a jerry can and some of the BMAT instructors. Another significant achievement is the building of capacity for the optimal employment of air power using ground attack aircraft, helicopter gunship, utility helicopters, as well as the use of regiment and special forces alongside the K-9 elements with ability to conduct a range of operations including rappelling, fast roping, combat search and rescue, casualty evacuation and medical evacuation. Simulation exercises were conducted last year in strategic locations to evaluate the synergy between these units. The Nigerian Air Force is currently participating actively in all the major internal security operations in the country, including Operation Lafayette Dole, Hadarin Daji, Delta Save, Safe Heaven, Awase, and Wild Stroke. We have uh, attacked uh, over 22 different targets in both northern and southern Bernou, and that has degraded the capacity of the terrorists substantially, and that has made it also much easier for us to continue doing, uh, given the support that our other uh, sister services, surface forces require. And that has kept the place quiet for a very long time, for more than three weeks, four weeks, no major, major uh, attack. 
It's not to say that uh, there has not been attacks here and there sometimes, which has been repelled by our uh, courageous ground troops. And uh, we'll continue to support them and make sure that, uh, you know, whatever enabling environment is required is created through the use of uh, air operations in order to make it possible for them to continue to conduct their own operations. Um, definitely in other parts of the country equally, we have operated with the police in Kaduna where we, 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 we uh, address the issue of ba uh, banditry in so many locations. Uh, we'll continue to do that all over the country. And uh, the whole idea, like I said, is to make sure that uh, we deal with this situation uh, as much as possible so that the ground troops can have the opportunity to move in with little or no hindrance uh, in the course of conducting their own operations. Apart from projecting air power in support of Operation Lafayette Dole, the flagship of the nation's counterinsurgency campaign, the Nigerian Air Force also conducts independent operations, including Operation Ruanwuta 1-4, Operation Thunder Strike 1 and 2. Operation Green Sweep 1 to 3. Operation Rattlesnake 1 to 3, as well as Operation Decisive Edge. For the past four and a half years, the service has flown over 24,000 hours while conducting 11,300 missions in support of Operation Lafayette Dole. In the fight against armed banditry in the Northwest, the Nigerian Air Force has deployed personnel along with air assets as part of the SY Defense Headquarters Operation Sarandaji and now Operation Hadarindaji. It has also conducted dedicated airstrikes against identified armed bandits locations under the auspices of Operation Dira Mikia. in sustainment of Air Marshal Bobaka's deliberate policy on gender inclusion that has ensured increased opportunities for female in the Nigerian Air Force. The service witnessed the winging of the first female fixed-wing fighter pilot in the person of Flying Officer Kafayat Sani, as well as the first female combat helicopter pilot, Flying Officer Tolope Arotile. The Nigerian Air Force is gender sensitive. Uh, what we have emphasized is the capacity or capability of the individual. What are you ready to bring on the table? It doesn't matter whether you are male or you are female. What is important is what can you bring on the table to deal with the problems we have. And the two uh, female officers, flying officer Sunny, I remember she came out of the best round in Kaduna. So it's not as if the Air Force decided to choose her because she's female. Oh, the woman came as the best all round. She collected a prize. So should we now say because she's a woman, we should set her aside and bring a male? No. We are a gender sensitive service. It will give opportunity to everybody. What is important is at the end of the day, you should be able to say, yes, I worked hard, and this is the benefit of working hard. Just like I'm sure she is probably saying. Immediately, we got opportunity to send pilots to the United States Air Force. We took that and said, look, this girl came at the best aura, let her go. And she did well also in the U.S. And you can see, I think she's very courageous yeah, because uh, she was one of the pilots that did the test flight on the NAV uh, 455. Uh, Alpha just came out of PDN. Uh, this is good. That is the kind of spirit we want. Whether you are male, you are female, you should show that commitment and patriotism and courage that is required as a regular combatant officer. And I think she has shown that and she's doing very well. For the helicopter gunship pilot also, she was in Mina, one of those fighting bandits. That's the spirit, that's the kind of uh, service that we want, where you are not judged by your gender but you are judged by what you can deliver. These girls are doing extremely well. Similarly, there was another girl in Kano, the first to go 
uh, on solo on the L-39 aircraft. In fact, in the history of Kanov as a flying school, basic fighter flying school, it's not an issue of uh, we are selecting her because, no, she has done well, she has done well. And uh, she is going out also with some other of our colleagues to other uh, to Czech Republic probably to continue their flying activities. And we are giving opportunity to everybody. Those that are good, if you are male, we we'll make sure that you get to where you are supposed to get to. You must see the value of working hard. Many other female officers and air women are also thriving in their areas of specialization and adding value in their places of deployment. Why not forgetting the fact that the Nigerian Air Force male pilots have kept the Nigerian airspace safe by flying missions in various theaters of operation across the country and beyond with dedication, passion and courage. These gallant crop of male pilots serving and retired are greatly appreciated at the occasion of the 56th anniversary of the Nigerian Air Force. As part of its continued support towards combating the COVID-19 pandemic, the Nigerian Air Force has continued to provide airlifts for medical equipment and supplies, as well as airlifts for the team of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and some VIPs in connection with the COVID-19 essentials. Moreover, the Nigerian Air Force, through its liquid oxygen plant, at the 103 strike group, Yola, is also producing oxygen for distribution to isolation centers and designated hospitals across the country in support of the national response to the COVID-19 emergency. As regards the safety of its personnel and their families, the Nigerian Air Force has taken elaborate steps to deal with the COVID-19 threat since the first confirmed case in Nigeria in February 2020. The medical branch of the service has undertaken a comprehensive sensitization campaign across all NAV units while in placing necessary measures to prevent outbreaks among personnel and their dependents. Immediately the outbreak started in, in China. What we did was to disseminate information to all our medical facilities, ask them to carry out enlightenment campaign in all our bases and surrounding villages. That is to say, wherever the Nigerian Air Force base is, there is a host community. We ask our people to meet them, to interact with them, and let them understand the import of uh, the coronavirus. It's a virus that keeps moving from one region to the other region. As long as people continue to move, definitely the virus will move. Now the virus has hit us. Immediately, we also started um, asking all our formation. We should not forget that during Ebola, we had hand washing facilities. All we did now was to add more. The hand washing facilities have been there. We just added more across all our formations. We also started doing temperature checks on people coming into the base and all our uh, formations. We started using the hand sanitizer more seriously than before the outbreak. And the enlightenment campaign were also taken to our religious uh, uh, um, centers. Furthermore, following the federal government um, uh, announcement, all schools were closed, we key into the federal government. We are not working in isolation. We are working with the federal government plan. The NCDC, we are always in communication with them. Also, uh, the defense headquarters have also formed a committee in which the Nigerian Air Force has been part of it. The overall achievements of the leadership of the 20th Chief of the Air Staff during a period of serious national economic challenge are an indication that one of the key drivers of his vision of reinforcing a culture of self-reliance and prudent management of resources has yielded dividends.
human ones are insatiable. And when it comes to management of resources, you must first accept the assumption that you can never get everything you want at the same time. So when we get funds, the chief determines his priorities. And for the last four and a half years, our priorities have been operations, 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 and crew support in that manner. So who are those in the front lines? Airplanes, pilots. So whatever we are doing as an Air Force, first, the airplanes must be serviceable, they must be flyable, the personnel, the crew must equally be operational in their status. So when we get funds, we must make sure we first apply it. And in applying it, I call the chief a financial engineer. Because if we get funds for a particular operation, we ensure that that fund, if it's meant for Lafayette Dole, we account for it for, to the last penny for Lafayette Dole. Clearly, the achievement of the Nigerian Air Force under the leadership of Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar could not have been accomplished without the adequate support of the federal government and the commitment of Nigerian Air Force officers, airmen, airwomen, and the civilian staff. Whatever we have achieved is because the officers and men, senior officers, junior officers, senior NCOs, NCOs, airmen, airwomen, including civilian staff, have continued to work hard, have keyed into that vision. And that is why we are able to achieve what we have achieved. And we want to also, of course, appreciate the National Assembly for appropriating the required funds for us to function. We want to also appreciate the Honorable Minister of Defense, a veteran general also who is very familiar, was in ECOMOC, veteran, uh, a veteran who understands the issue of air power, air operations, and so on. And of course, we will not uh, forget the Chief of Defense staff who has continued to give strategic guidance and leadership, as well as the other service chiefs, the Chief of Army staff and the Chief of Naval staff, the Inspector General of Police, and other, uh, the DG DSS. I must also appreciate the Central Bank Governor, because the Nigerian Air Force, for the Air Force to fly, we need spare parts. Spare parts, the bulk of these spare parts are acquired from outside. And these resources required to pay for these spare parts have to be transferred by the central bank. So the central bank governor and his uh, able staff have really played a very crucial role. Of course, the minister of finance and other accountant general who has been making it possible for us to have all the resources required before we even go to say we are buying. Uh, and other ministries and departments and agencies of government have played a substantial role in whatever we've been able to achieve in the last four and a half years. As the Nigerian Air Force marked its 56th anniversary, there is no doubt that it has emerged as a formidable force that has been repositioned for effective, efficient and timely employment of air power in response to Nigeria's national security imperatives. The service is indeed willing, able, and ready.